like, so let's listen in. To Kent Moore cabinets of an active shooter, officers responded to the scene and arrived in a fairly short period of time. However, the shooter had gone by the time officers got here. They did, however, discover some people hurt that had been shot. Um, initially, four people were transported to St. Joe Hospital in critical condition with gunshot injuries. One other person was transported with no injuries, apparently it was an asthma attack, and one person was deceased at the scene. Um, right now, this is a joint effort between multiple agencies, uh, College Station PD's here, Brian Fires here, um, and, and many more that I'm missing here uh, responded to assist, work this, to assist working this scene. As you can imagine, it's very complex because you have a whole number of workers at the warehouse, and uh, so we're sorting through all that and, and interviewing witnesses and talking to people that know what happened. Chief, can you provide information about a suspect or suspects at this point? Um, it's a little bit early for that, but we believe we may there may be a suspect in custody, but we're still working on that, and that's working with the DPS, who I should have mentioned was helping out, obviously, today also. Is there any connection with the DPS involved incident in Iola involved in this case? Um, I, I can't confirm that, but I, they may be related. Is there expected to only be one suspect involved in the situation? Um, we're still investigating that. We know, obviously, at least one suspect. Um, I've heard reports there might have been a couple other people in the later stages of what occurred, but I don't know that for sure. Any idea at this point a motive or if this suspect had a connection with Kid Moore? Uh, we really don't know the motive. Um, we're still investigating that. I believe that the suspect was an employee of Kent Moore, I believe. I cannot. I, I don't. I don't know that information right now. And what does this mean for the workers? Will they uh, are they being released fully, or how does that work? Well, obviously, we're talking to everybody, and as we talk to them, and as soon as we can release them, we will release them. You mentioned the warehouse area. Obviously, this is kind of a big campus. Can you be more specific about where the shooting happened? Um, I don't necessarily know how to do that. It was, I mean, in one of the bays at at the plant where they're making the cabinets. Kent Moore cabinets. The, the victims, can you confirm if they are all employees of Kent Moore cabinets? I, I cannot. I don't I don't know that information, Rusty. Um, any anything that should be relayed to the families of employees, if there's somebody who they can get a hold of, should they be going somewhere? Or? We're working on putting together a phone number that they can call. Uh, we don't have that put quite together yet, but we're working on a phone number so they can call and, and check on their, their loved one. I asked Lieutenant uh, Jackson James earlier about this, but talk about, in general, a police department's response to something like this. Obviously, you've trained for, for situations like this. How did all that help with the response today? Well, I mean, it's changed over the years. Officers now, when there's something like this, which was an active shooter, officers respond immediately to it. Um, they, they don't necessarily wait to put together a team to go in. They go in one or two at a time as they get there so that because we know that if we can get in there and uh, and stop it will save lives. Are there any state or federal agencies aiding at all in this? Um, I know that the FBI offered uh, and they may or may not have been I just I just haven't seen them um, but I know that we've received calls from several federal agencies and other agencies offering to help. All victims at uh, St. Joe's? Uh, I believe so. And I just want to confirm six total so four at the hospital, one was not injured with the asthma attack, and then one dead. Deceased, that's correct okay. right now. Okay. And then do you know which St. Joseph Health location they were taking? I'm assuming the CH, the main hospital. Port, Port of Ryan, one Thank you. Thank you. Do you know if the suspect fled on foot initially or in a vehicle or how they got away from the I believe in a vehicle, but I don't have that specific information. Chief, how would you describe the level of risk to the broader community. Um, I mean, if the suspect's in custody, then I, the risk is pretty low. If he's not in custody, uh, then I think everybody should be cautious, but they, you know, should always be cautious. I don't know that time, but I know it was pretty quick because I was listening to the radio and, and heard it, I, but I don't know the exact length of time. What, what's happening right now? What, what are everybody... Right now, we're working the, the crime scene. Um, we're interviewing witnesses. Um, we're trying to keep people hydrated, include witnesses and police officers hydrated, because it's obviously pretty warm out, as you guys very well know. Um, so it, it just takes a long time to put in a spread out scene, which this is a fairly spread out scene. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time to, to put it all together. Does the 
suspect believed to have resided in Iowa? Um, I don't know that information. And for the case of the, uh, the helicopter here still hovering and people driving by, what should they know about that and you know, how that should it impact them in any way? I assume that's a media helicopter. It is. So, <laughs> it'll, I don't know. Uh, anything else, Steve? No, I appreciate you being out here and uh, I think you got water right. You know, if we have something to update, we certainly will. Um, and I don't, I don't have any way to predict that. Okay, thank, thank you. you so thank much. you.